There are times in my life that I have to just think to myself, did that just happen to me? What is going on? Well, what I am talking about here is a particular day, <laughs> an event happened that was so strange, it was a once in a lifetime thing. Uh, it may have happened somewhere else, to somebody else. But this particular day, it happened to me. Well, and I happened to have a friend, a co-worker, with me. And I'm estimating this had to have been around May of 2000. I had left Denver. I was working for the Denver Post, and I had left Denver in March of 2000. And I had not been there that long. It was in Des Moines, Iowa. The Des Moines Register had just built a brand new facility uh, off Army Post Road, if you know Des Moines. It, right across from the airport, actually. The Des Moines Airport. Beautiful facility, state-of-the-art, new press. They were, In fact, when I got there, they were, we weren't even printing there yet. They were still printing downtown. And, Ger and the Germans were there. It was a German press. And we had a whole bunch of Germans there installing it, doing test runs. And we had just, we'd went live, which means we started printing on that press no more than a month before. Well, I was on this day, I was on it, what was called the advance crew. It was just two guys. We would come in early to plate up the press. Uh, nobody else in the building. The, the day shift had ended. And it was just me and him. And, and what we did is we'd wait. We'd get the plates for the press as they came out and plate them up on the press. So when the crew come in for that night's paper, they still had to plate up the press with, with the news. The way it works you get plates throughout the day or the evening. They get the plates. Classifieds are usually first because they're already done. Just minor things to add or subtract. And then you get your wire news that's off the wire that they, they can print those stories. But you don't get the final plates until right up to the last moment. You know, usually the front page or the page that the front page story is continued on. But if all the other plates are on the press, and this is the only paper I worked at that did this. Otherwise, it's every pressman has a unit that he presses. And these, these presses are huge. They're as big as ships. Four stories tall. You got four levels, operating levels, and then you got a level below where the paper feeds. And you got guys down below that tend, the, tend to the rolls. They're roll tenders. Um, real tenders, actually, not roll tenders. You have roll tenders, but... Anyway, so I'm on this crew this day, and it's kind of boring, you know, and this is a union shop, so that particular job, that's what you do, and when there's nothing to do, well, there's nothing to do. You don't go do someone else's job, you don't, you don't clean, you don't do janitor jobs, because it's a union shop. If you grab a mop in a union shop and start mopping the floor, the janitor is going to come and chew you out because he's union. And that's his job, and you're taking his job. There's times I like that. And then there's times you don't, because you just, you know how to do something, or fix something. Something breaks on the press, you know how to do it, but you can't fix it, because that is the machinist's job, or that's the electrician's job. So you got to call the electrician, call the machinist, and wait for him to come. And fix the problem. And then you can start your, you can resume your job. So we're in a lull. There's no more plates. We've already plated up what we got. So we go out the side door of the production facility where the press room was to have a smoke. You know, I was a smoker back then. Most pressmen were because you just were. It was like being in the army. If you didn't smoke, you didn't get a break. We're out there puffing on a smoke, talking like we normally do, you know. Hey, we might be out there having three or four smokes. 
And it's a pretty nice day, sunshiny. Wasn't cold. Uh, it was probably about May. Yeah, it's been it's been 24 years. That that those two years, man, that a lot happened to me. So we hear sirens coming. You know, it's it's on the outskirts of Des Moines. You didn't hear it often, but you'd heard it. And right up the road about four miles was the town of Norwalk, city of Norwalk. I lived there. I had an apartment there uh, four miles up the road. So I hear sirens, and they're coming from Norwalk going to Des Moines. And we're just standing there having our, our smoke. And they approach. We see them coming. It's actually a fire rescue truck. And I, know, and I know this was Norwalk's because I had three stepsons at the time that I had arranged, I had arranged with the fire department for them to come tour the fire department. They took them on the ambulance. They took them and let them spray fire hoses. It was a pretty cool experience. So I knew those particular vehicles. So the first truck was, it was like an F-350. You've seen them. They've got the toolboxes on the side, like a big big pickup with the toolboxes on the side. And then in between is the bed. Maybe they might have uh, fire hoses or they'll have a winch. You know, it's, it's a rescue truck. It's not particularly a fire. It's a fire truck, but they don't carry water. Uh, so he was first... And then behind him was an ambulance. So something, a car accident or something that had to happen because there was two of them. And I'm sure they were headed to the hospital, which, you know, wasn't too far. And as he's approaching, you know, our building is here and here's Army Post Road and here's this road they're coming on. Army Post Road was uh, pretty, I think it was four lanes, it was pretty pretty main stretch that goes through Des Moines. There's some good eating on that road, too, man. Good pizza place. Ooh. Okay, I'm off subject. So they're going. They're making a right-hand turn, but before they got to the light, for like two weeks before that, they'd been working on the road, uh, probably repairing potholes because they plow. They get a lot of snow there. So, and when they plow a lot, it you get chug holes and they were filling those up well they were still working on that and i guess that lead truck before you know before the or ahead of the ambulance he hit one of them so we're standing there and we see this box fly off the truck and i didn't think i thought well hell, the ambulance has got to see that nope they turned right they kept going and we're like, man, what? Yeah, it's just, it was a red box. It, it just looked like a maybe a tote. So we're standing there, and they're not coming back, and there's nobody else coming. So he walks out there, and then he waves me over, and it's a red box. It's like it's got two latches like an old suitcase. You know, it's got the things, you, you flip them up, pull the little things down and then you open it and i told him i said dude don't open that don't open it you know what that is and, and if something comes up missing we don't want to know but we didn't know what to do so we tried calling the fire department uh, trying to look for a you know a, a number well i had just gotten my very first cell phone it was one of them nokia's there wasn't, you know, there wasn't no smartphone. Uh, there was either called 911 or you had to go back in the building, search for a phone book and try to figure it out. Well, we just called 911. Didn't want to do it, but we didn't know what it was. So I'm dialing and, and for some reason the call is not going through. And he opens the box. And I'm like, oh, why'd you open it? He said, you know, we got to see if it's even worth calling him for. Or we can take it back down there when we get off. So he opens the box. And he looks in there and he kind of jumps back. <laughs> I'm like, what's in there? He goes, looks like a Vienna sausage. 
so I go over there and I look, and it's a, a Ziploc bag, but there's those ice ice packs all around it. It's like they're all connected. The whole thing is lined with ice packs. And so I grab the baggie, and I flip it over, and I kind of did a thing. It was a man's or a woman's, I don't know, severed big toe. Oh, it was nasty. So I put it back in there, shut the lid. So then I knew, you know, probably whoever was in that ambulance <laughs> had their toe cut off. And they need that toe. And it's it, time, you know, time was critical. So we did call back nine. We finally got a hold of 911. Told them the story, but we didn't want to tell them we opened it. Uh, so I didn't know what to say. I said, look, man, we got this box. We don't know what it is, but I think it's a cooler. And it fell off this truck. And they're asking me all these stupid questions. I'm like, look, we're at the paper. We're on break. We got to get back to work. I told them how it fell off the, the truck ahead of the ambulance. and But I didn't want to tell them we opened it. And so I, I asked the guy. I said, do you want me to open it? I said it kind of loud. He goes, no, sir, don't don't open it. Don't open it. And then I, it dawned on me, okay, we got to get smart here because I got to open it, you know, because he's not going to, it's not, he's not going to take this as a priority unless he knows what it is. And then I, it, right about then I yelled to the other guys, no, he said, don't open it. Brilliant, because right then what I did is let the guy know we did open it and we know what's in there now. And so the guy asked, well, what's in there? And I kind of, I already knew, you know, but I had to kind of play it off. And I said, well, hold on a second. We went over there and I said, you're not going to believe this, but it's, it's, a, it's a human body part. And he questioned me. You know, you would think the guy would know. But I guess the dispatch center was in Des Moines. Who knows? They didn't know anything about it. I said, well, it, it's a severed toe. It looks like a toe. There's a toenail. There's blood. And it's on ice. He says, okay, hurry up. Put it back. Close it back up. So we did. Well, it was already closed because we lied to the guy. We had already seen it. I'm like, what do you want me to do with this thing? They need to come back and get it because this poor SOB ain't going to have no toe. You know, he can't sit in here for 10 hours and the guy's toe's all going to heal up in there and they ain't going to be able to sew it back on. I'm worried about somebody's toe and I got work to do. So we got to get back to work. And I told this guy, I said, I tell you what, we're going we're gonna to bring the, we're gonna bring the box, the cooler, and we're going to set it up at the guard shack. When you walked in the Des Moines Register, all these newspapers have guards. Because there's always threats. There used to be, anyway. And there is a manned... You, when you walk in the building, that's the first thing you see. Even employees had to show our badges to get in. I said, I'm going to put it up there. Because we got to get back to work. Uh, one thing about newspaper business. you Nothing stops the paper. Nothing. Paper must go out. So it doesn't matter the situation. You got to get back to work. And so I set it up there at the desk and the guard, there's no guard there. Come to find out they didn't come in till later that evening. Uh, but we had to get to work. We were the only two in the building, basically, other than probably the janitor. So we set the cooler on the counter right where... You know, you could you, anybody could walk in the front door. You just you you couldn't get past that. So set it right where if they send uh, somebody a cop or whoever to get it, it's there. And then we go back to work. And I don't think and you can't see the front of the building from inside the press room. And we're we get busy. You know, it's starting to, the plates are really coming out. We're busy. An hour and a half later. I go up there to see if they picked it up, and there it sits. It's still sitting there. Nobody came and picked it up. The guys 
the poor guy's toe, or girl, I mean, you couldn't tell, it wasn't that huge. His toe's sitting on ice, he's probably already at the hospital, who knows, they're probably driving all over looking for this thing. And I got his toe, I got this guy's toe. Call 911 again, I said, look man, this toe's still here. They went to the downtown building, and they said, we went in there, asked around, nobody knows nothing. I said, we're not there. We're at the other facility by the airport. Why would we be there? So here, you know, it's pushing two hours. This guy's toe, you know, it's, it's probably chilling in there, you know, it's chilling. It ain't, the toe's fine. But the guy that lost the toe, he's probably not. He's probably thinking, I'm going to go the rest of my life without a toe. Man. So, <laughs> we go back to work. I'm like, for sure. For sure they know. About that time, the security guard is coming on to a shift. And we tell him. Tell him the story. When you tell a story like that, the guy wants details. We don't got time to tell him details. Look, we're like, look, this fell off a fire truck thing. We call 911. It's a, it's a man's big toe, and he wants to open it. I'm like, there's no need to open it. They said don't open it again. And uh, I said, we're, we just I told them we'll set it here, and then they're going to send somebody to get it. Okay. And I'm like, good. It's out of my conscience now i don't have to worry about this stupid cooler man i'm getting to the end guys i'm getting to the end two probably two more hours go by so i'm curious i'm curious i go up there to the guard shack and guess what there on the counter still Sits the toe. And I can't believe what I'm seeing. Why haven't they come and retrieved this toe? And the guard. I mean, these guards that they hire, these security guards, they're, they're dumber than a box of hammers, most of them. You know, it's the only job that most of them can get. Most of them are extremely overweight. You know, they just, their job is to sit there and look at people's badges. We always worried, well, what if somebody comes in with a threat? What are they going to do? They're going to run and hide because they're not armed. I look at the guy. I said, dude, hasn't nobody showed up? I ain't seen anybody. I ain't seen anybody show up. So, I'm, you know, I kind of feel responsibility because, uh, for this toe. And I don't, want, I don't like it, man. I don't like it. I don't like to be in charge of a toe. I just ain't. I ain't liking it. So I, I sit there and I, I, I can't leave. I can't leave work, you know. And if they're not going to send anybody to get it, I don't know what else to do. And the only thing left to do, actually, it was brilliant. And, and I don't know why I didn't think of it. I called a tow truck. A tow truck. <laughs> Woo! Happy trails. <laughs>